Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over my setup for 2023. I've had this setup for 3 months now and I love it. My setup at the end of 2022 looked like this. You can see the full video at the link in the top right corner. I could make good espresso drinks for sure, but I had never deliberately considered my workflow. I was inefficient with a lot of back and forth movements, and I was making 10 trips to the sink across the kitchen. I also wanted to try a different espresso machine. For this video, first I'll cover the new workflow, second, I'll cover each tool and equipment I use. And third, I'll talk about what I like and don't like about my new setup. Starting with the workflow, I've made a lot of changes to improve convenience and efficiency. First, I moved my nice cups and single dosing containers in this cupboard so that when I start making coffee, I open just one cupboard to get five containers, two mugs, two travel mugs, and one tall glass. I place the single dosing containers next to the grinder, the two mugs on top of the espresso machine, and the two travel mugs and tall glass in the staging area. To start grinding, I position a warm portafilter on a grinder, then I empty a single dose container in my dosing cup, then some RDT and shaking, and then in it goes. Grinding takes about 30 seconds, during which I pour my milk into the frothing pitcher. Once grinding is done, I prepare my puck manually with some WDT, leveling, and tamping. From the grinding area, I move right to the brewing area. I flush the group head, quick wipe, then I place the portafilter, the scale, and a warm cup and start brewing. For this light medium roast bean, I am brewing for 38 to 40 seconds during that time, I froth my milk. When I reach 43 grams on the scale, I stop the brewing so I end up with 45 grams of yield. Right around that time, my milk is hot and I stop steaming. Here I do a quick steam purge and wand wipe, then I steam a bigger pitcher to warm it up. From the brewing area, I move to the staging area. I transfer my milk to a clean and warm pitcher. This mixes the milk again, and the larger pitcher gives a better angle for latte art. You can skip this step and just stick with your original pitcher. Now I pour my milk into the espresso, and my first drink is done. Cleaning is very easy with the new sink and pitcher rinser. I rinse my milk pitchers and shot glass here, and then I use the knock box that is in this corner, rinse my portafilter, and I start the process over on the other side of the counter. Now I'll briefly cover all the tools I use from start to finish. You can find links for all of these in the video description just below the video. I have been using these single dosing containers from Weber Design for a few years now. I love them. They really improve workflow for single dosing. I also use them with the Oracle Touch. The external grinder I use is the Monolith Flat Max by Cafatech, a company out of Seattle, Washington. I've had this grinder for over two years now, and it replaced another Flat Max that had different burrs. This one has burrs that are optimized for light and medium roast. This grinder comes with a really nice funnel and a plastic bean cup and an RDT bottle to spray and shake beans before you grind. The beans go in at the top, then towards the end of the grinding, you can use the Mr. Puff bellows to push any remaining grounds out of the grinder. And finally, the chute is removable so you can sweep any grounds left in the tip. So this is truly a zero retention grinder. 
in as far as is possible to get to zero retention. You can also adjust the speed of the burrs here on the side, and this gives you a range of zero to 400 RPM. Grinding at different RPMs will give you different brewing results. I normally stick with 350 RPMs. I absolutely love this grinder and I don't think I'll ever want or need a different grinder. The owner of Cafetech, Dennis, personally tests espressos from each grinder the company ships to make sure it meets his quality standards. The WDT tool I used for years broke a few months ago and it wasn't easy to fix so this time around I chose a tool that could easily be repaired and that was more affordable than the B plus tool I had. This WDT stir is from Fused Line. I didn't realize until preparing for this video that it's actually the same company that makes the Oracle Touch single dosing kit that I showed in a video a few weeks ago. I paid for this tool myself and I chose it because the reviews were fantastic. I bought the metal stainless steel one to match my setup, but you can get this in many different colors, including this really neat white set. Generally, I prefer really thin needles, so I bought different size needles for just a couple dollars on Amazon, and I swapped them out. I use 0.3 millimeter needles. This tool is very cool because you can replace the needles with different sizes, if you like different sizes like I do, or replace them in case they break. And you can make your own patterns of needles, either filling all the holes or just using some like I do. I keep this WDT tool on a magnetic holder that sticks to the grinder. This is also from Fused Line. I do use a distributor tool sometimes, but less and less as I try to streamline my workflow. This is a generic one I bought off of Amazon, and I bought this one specifically because it measures 58.3 millimeters in diameter. So it distributes coffee as close to the basket walls as possible. For tamping, I use a self-leveling tamper by Decent Espresso. As you can see, this has an edge that protrudes beyond the basket so that every tamp is perfectly level. Also, this is calibrated to tamp at 25 pounds of pressure to add more consistency to each shot. I am very happy with this tamper. And then I keep both of these tools on the tamping station stand from Decent Espresso. The Rocket R91 is currently my daily driver. It's an interesting machine. There's a lot to love about it. The steam power is awesome. The manual pressure profiling implementation is well done. Water temperature stability is fantastic. And I like the way it looks. For the downsides, the touch screen isn't great. The options in the UI are limited. And repeatability on the automatic pressure profiling implementation is not so consistent. I'll do a full review on the machine in a few weeks. I did plumb in the machine, and that is a convenience feature you start to take for granted very quickly. I forget that I even have it until I am using the Oracle Touch and I have to refill the machine every other day. This machine came with three porta filters, but I really only use the bottomless porta filter for brewing. And I keep the single spout porta filter hung on the wall with the blind basket installed so it's convenient to back flush the group head daily after brewing. On the other hand, this machine did not come with a knock box or milk pitcher. So I bought this knock box and these two milk pitchers from a company called Mota, mostly because I thought they would look great alongside the Rocket R91. The knock box works okay, but it is not as stable as the Oracle Touch knock box if you are really knocking hard. The Mota pitchers are actually great. I have no complaints about these. I have two scales. This basic scale is inexpensive and it just works all the time. I love it. I also have an Akaya Lunar Scale that I use regularly, but personally, I don't think it's worth the price tag of over $250, but that really depends on your application. I installed this pitcher rinser. It saves me time, and it works quite well for quick cleaning of the milk jugs and shot glass. For the faucet, I was just looking for something stainless with a retractable hose and an easy on-off handle. For the sink, we wanted something fairly deep to add versatility for thawing frozen food and to help with food prep in general. Finally, I still have the coffee drawer here below the coffee machine. 
The only new addition to the drawer is a microfiber towel to keep this big metal box clean without causing any scratching to the stainless steel. So in the end, what do I like and don't like about this setup? By far, the best value in a new setup is the easy, efficient, and smooth workflow. The reorganization was a free and easy fix that really paid off. So I do want to emphasize that you don't have to spend a lot of money to improve your current setup. I wish I had done this years ago. The addition of the pitcher rinser and sink were a bit pricey, but since we don't plan to move and we don't plan to stop drinking coffee, I think this is an investment that easily pays for itself over time. I'm certainly very happy with the added convenience. I am enjoying the experimentation with the Rocket R91. It is really stretching my coffee experience and expanding my comfort zone into new areas. However, I don't think the R91 is my final machine. I will stick with it for a year or two at most, and then I definitely want to try something else. I relocated the Oracle Touch to the other side of the kitchen, so it is next to the sink, and when I use the Oracle Touch, I use the built-in conical grinder with the fused line single dosing setup, and I'm quite happy with that. I can crank out drinks pretty quick with that setup there. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope that sharing this experience with you was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.